Mike with comedian Dave Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. It is so fucking embarrassing to be an Australian at the moment. What the fuck is wrong with us? All this bullshit about Novak Djokovic not being allowed into the country. Oh my God, it is insufferable shit. You have to be vaccinated to come into our country. There's 30,000 cases a fucking day. At this point, it's a fucking free-for-all. I don't think Djokovic is going to fucking break the system. Djokovic is not the problem. The sentiment behind it is, no, he's got to follow the rules. We all followed the rules, so he should follow the rules too. That's the sentiment, and it's fucking embarrassing. Shut the fuck up. The rules are the rules for a reason. That is the fucking national voice of Australia at the moment. There's rules in tennis and there's rules in countries. And we live in the greatest nation on earth, Australia. I'm triple vaccinated and I've had COVID three times. Novak Djokovic should be vaccinated as well if he wants to play in our tennis tournament. Why should Novak Djokovic be fucking exempted? Um, I'll tell you why, Cheryl, because he's fucking Novak Djokovic, you dumb fucking whore. (laughs) That's fucking why. Because the cunt's gonna end his career as the greatest tennis player in the history of fucking tennis. He's not my favourite tennis player, but he will be the greatest tennis player. He's been crushing Nadal and Federer for the last fucking 10 years. They barely want to set off the cunt. It doesn't matter. He should be treated like everyone else. No, he shouldn't. He should be treated like a fucking god. You're talking about one of the healthiest people on fucking earth. I think he's had COVID as well. Why does he fucking need a fucking vaccine? Just let him in. Let him dominate the fucking tournament and let him leave two weeks later. If he gets sick, he could probably call up fucking Joe Biden and say, send me fucking Air Force One and your best doctors and fucking Joe Biden would send it over. And he's not even from the fucking States. He's from fucking Serbia. It's so fucking embarrassing. And Australians are like, yeah, we're just laid back. We just go with the flow. That's what we are. We just fucking love a little bit of fucking sunshine. Love a little bit of barbecue and we just chill out. We just take it easy and chill out. Unless you break the rules and then you should be punished. My God, Australia is just becoming the fucking laughing stock of the entire world. It's so fucking embarrassing. Like we already sound retarded. We already act retarded. Now people everywhere all over the world think we are retarded. And they're right. We are. I hope they don't let him in, and I hope Novak Djokovic never ever comes back to play the Australian Open ever again, and I hope he fucking dominates tennis till he's like 45, the next fucking 10 years, and he doesn't come back, and then the other top 10 players go, well, if Novak's not going, I'm not going, because I already don't want to play in the Australian Open, because it's fucking 48 degrees on fucking centre court at Rod Laver, so I'm not going either. Then the fucking top 50 don't go. Then the Australian Open gets downgraded to a fucking ATP fucking 500 tour level. And that's what it fucking deserves. It's embarrassing. It's so fucking embarrassing. Anyway, it's Friday as well. It's embarrassing and it's Friday. And you know what Friday means. It's the first Friday of the year. It's the first fucked up Friday of the year. So if you're new to the podcast, Fucked Up Fridays is when listeners send me in a story. I read it out on the podcast. So if you would like to send me in a story, just email me on boilcomedy at gmail.com or just send it into the Patreon if you want to skip the queue a little bit. Join the Patreon. It helps out the podcast. It helps me out, obviously. It's a pint a month, it'll keep ads off and I'll start a new podcast when I get to 200. I'm at 195 now with like 12 decline cards. So if all those 12 decliners fucking sort their shit out, I'll be sending you an email tomorrow to tell you to sort your shit out. If you get on board, then I can get the wheels in motion to start my Fucked Up Friday podcast. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a Fucked Up Friday podcast. 
I'm going to do some questions and answers about the new podcast on the Patreon. So look out for that in the next probably few days because I'm locked inside for the next three days here completely. Not allowed to leave the house. Anyway, the links are in my social media bios, which is at Boyle Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or just message me directly and I'll send you the link my fucking self. So... This week's story was sent in by my man Joe. It says Joey. Joey. He's from fucking the Netherlands. So I don't know if that's like Joe Re. It's spelled J O E R I. It's the Netherlands version of fucking Joe. Joe Blow. Anyway, fuck it. Let's get straight into the story. Let's get stuck in. After a calm afternoon in the park with some friends smoking joints and having a few beers, We headed into the city. He sort of just like picked it up fucking mid-story. I like it. A warm Amsterdam summer evening. 520s in the pocket. Why do you have 520s? I think Netherlands Joe might be a fucking drug dealer. Uh, 520s in the pocket. Uh, Let's go, boys. The first bar was shit. Mostly guys looking like Bulgarian bouncers, neck tattoos, and ugly expensive t-shirts. Did a couple of shots and moved on to Melo Milo. A live blues place. Pretty much a giant wine cave with a stage at the back and a 70-something year old cowboy behind the bar serving very generous whiskies. Did some coke on the toilet with some British girls barefoot dancing, indoor smoking, and ended up fingering one of the girls on the dance floor. That would be enough. That's enough. That's a great fucked up Friday. Love the story, mate. Loved it. That would have been enough for me. That sounds like the perfect evening just there. He was drinking, did some coke on the toilet, danced in bare feet, darted indoors, and then fingered a girl on the dance floor. That sounds like Boyle in his prime. My prime was like one year, 23 to 24. So I moved on to an Irish pub one of my friends used to work at. One of the guys working there was a real asshole. He had been caught stealing a $100 chip from one of the players in our poker game at the pool club a few weeks before and when confronted, spat at the owner in the face before being kicked out. When we came in, this guy looked like absolute shit and after some pints and ketamine, he passed out clean on a Chesterfield in the corner. My mate decided he still had something coming and came up with an idea. It was after closing, so it was just us there and one of the staff, who also couldn't stand this guy, after prodding him a little to see if the guy was really out, my mate took a condom, spat in it a couple of times, took the guy's pants down and pushed the spit-filled condom up his butthole with a pencil until only the end was hanging out and left him there. That's uh, that's quite a prank. <laughs> Full-blown sexual assault. Anal penetration with a pencil. Like if that was one of your chick friends, you'd be writing this fucked up Friday from jail. But because it's a dude, it's quite a funny gag. <laughs> it's a fucked up gag. But it is kind of funny, especially thinking about him pulling the full length of the condom out of his ass the next day. (laughs) And you couldn't fucking say anything to anyone either. You couldn't be like, hey, I found a fucking uh, used condom in my asshole the other night. Did any of you happen to put it in there? Did you see anything last night? You just have to keep that low profile and just deal with the consequences of finding that in your ass yourself. You have to work yourself out after that. So where were we? We were at um, first degree sexual assault. Then what was it? So we stuck it in his ass and left him there. Earlier on, we had made an appointment to do some mushrooms the next day. So I went home to sleep for a couple of hours, woke up, got on the train and wandered around the dunes of nude holland spectacular puddles and grasses i don't know what that means (laughs) like the view was good or something maybe like great grass great grass and puddles so got the train back got filthy drunk again and somehow lost my way home in my own city i was on my bicycle 
had somehow ended up in the Harbour District and thought I recognised the shortcut home via the freeway, got on the freeway, drove into traffic on the emergency lane, imagining myself to be Lance Armstrong, cars honking like crazy, and when reaching a tunnel, realising I wasn't where I'd hoped I was, out of the tunnel came two police cars and a police motorbike. They asked what drugs I was on. Just beer, sir. They made me park my bike and took me to a police station. I slept there and because I couldn't identify myself, was driven home the next morning so I could show them my passport. I still had an hour or two to get to my shit telephone research job, so I cracked open a beer and walked to work. Beautiful. Getting there early and in desperate need of some rest, I decided to climb the fence surrounding the building to take a nap in the parking lot. I jumped off the fence, clipped the top of the fence with my foot and smashed into the ground, breaking my wrist. Luckily, the alcohol prevented me from feeling this. I found a nice spot to sleep, was woken up by the shift manager, worked and then headed off to my high school reunion. I arrived there looking and smelling like a hobo, had a couple of drinks, ended up passionately kissing my high school sweetheart. What an end to the story. You don't have to be a success to live your dreams. You just fucking do what's in your heart and then turn up to your high school reunion 10 years after you've finished unchanged. Like you basically left year 12 as an 18 year old and you've turned back up as a 30 year old unchanged, unshowered, ready to roll and still pick up your high school sweetheart. That's winning. That's winning the game. Thanks for the story, Big Joe. That was fucking uplifting. That's going to fucking inspire quite a few of the listeners. So thank you. Anyway, that is it for tonight. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.